Hello and welcome to the second climbing conditioning workshop with Jack Walton Functional Health and Performance. Today we looked at why climbers should squat and why it's important for their health and for performance levels. Um, the main aim being to for the group of climbers to be able to assess their squats and finish with some solutions to that. So we spent a bit of time looking at you know common myths of squatting. We looked further into why the squat pattern as a movement pattern is important for uh, climbing specific performance as well as general uh, human function. And one of the reasons was very much that it is a functional movement. We looked at how that could be applied to different movements like the frog and the Egyptian positions on the wall, uh, strength and conditioning, how it relates to reduced injuries. We started simply with just looking at the assessment profile of the squat. So we took the, the group of climbers through this and we were looking at how they were moving through it, ankles, knees, hips, lower back, torso, head, arms, all this kind of profile thing we found out you know a lot of things about the individual kind of answers to the squat whereas if somebody was bending quite far forward if there was some twisting going on if an ankle was dropping in a little bit and it just relates to where the strength is or the weakness is up through the chain um, and if we want to move well on the wall on the rock when we're bouldering or climbing then we want to be able to really get this this down as a as a full profile so the solutions that we worked on during the workshop and on an individual level were fairly simply to potentially regress the movement pattern from a squat, so we're not necessarily always trying to train the squat to get strong at the squat. So we may do that. We may also try and lengthen the tight tonic muscles, or we may also strengthen the weak muscles. It all depends on our assessments and our movement profile. In terms of the regressed movement patterns, there are essential exercises that can be used that ultimately enhance the squat and enhance the performance levels on the rock, namely crawling patterns and hip dominant exercises. During this workshop with this dedicated group of climbers, we certainly did regress some of the movement patterns, but we also looked at another step which could be to lengthen the tight muscles and get them to the right length and tension. An area of concern for some was tight hamstrings and how this might affect their performance. You can refer back to the first video of the climbing conditioning workshops to look at the PNF and active isolated stretching methods that we used. Another area of focus for the climbers was of course across the shoulder girdle and getting the right strength and tension through the lats, through the pecs, uh, to enable some good function there. When investigating the next step to strengthen any weak spots, we could see from some profiles that there was some force going through ankles and knees and maybe hips, which could be worked on, and therefore we would do some strength testing to see if there was any differences, asymmetries, left to right and then maybe pick an exercise that could help balance that out whether it's just a simple hip isolation exercise or something more complex. When we did see some ankle instability on maybe the right or left ankle we could test further up the chain uh, we used on this occasion a clap test and see where the the instability might be coming from whether it's VMO or further up and then accordingly provide a strength exercise to balance that out again. In terms of conditioning, injury prevention and enhancing performance levels 
ideally when we've got that foundation and that functional profile of being able to do a full squat, have a full flexibility, have all the strength and balance, then we can start to progress the exercise and really get strong and powerful and explosive on it to really make the transition into climbing performance levels.